Welcome to Engadget E3 Day 1. This is the uh, Engadget E3 Daily Show. I am Matt Smith, UK Bureau Chief at Engadget.com. I am joined by... Jessica Condit, Senior Reporter for Engadget.com. And welcome. Like, so this is just officially Day 1, but we've been working all weekend. We worked all Monday. It's Tuesday, but we've, you know, we've already worked half a week on this show already. So let's get right to it. Let's start. So first up, what do we have? We have EA. Yes. So yeah, Electronic Arts opened E3 this year uh, on a Saturday. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Uh, so it was actually a pretty cool show. Um, they had a lot of sports games, of course. So EA you have does your FIFA, that. The you have FIFA. your Madden. You have your new NBA game. Yeah. But the cool thing with the games this year is they have story modes. So right. EA is adding actual single player narrative content to these games and it's a really cool angle. Right. It's, it's making me interested in these games in a way I really haven't been before. Exactly right. So uh, we've already written it up on it. Engadget, our uh, FIFA editor, our official FIFA editor, Engadget, Nika <laughs> Alvarez has already played it and he's totally in love with this new story mode. So if you want to read more about that, you should check that out on Engadget. But that's really just yes. the start of the eight. So they had the sports games, of course. What was the next type? What was the highlight for you? Let's see, I wrote a few down. So, A Way Out. Ah. That, this game we actually played together. So A Way Out comes from uh, the Haze Light, the studio, well, basically the team that did Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons, and then they started this studio. Um, and Brothers was a game that, I mean, really touched my, my heart. Like, it was a, it it's emotional. It was a very emotional, mm -hmm. cooperative game. Yeah, it's a single player game that yeah. you basically play as two people. So you're controlling two different characters with two different sticks, and it's really, really cool. Yeah, yeah. So A Way Out kind of expands on that idea, but, but brings in a multiplayer aspect. Right. So it's a prison break game. It looks like The Wire. It's like gritty. Yeah, it's very gritty, and it's very. it seems a lot more big budget than Brothers. You can tell mm -hmm. you've got a bit of that EA power coming up behind it to kind of push it forward. Yeah. But it's fantastic, and this game, it's a cooperative game you play in split screen like you did with games during you know, Sega Genesis and SNES days. And it's kind of incredible. So me and Jess sat pretty much like this. We had a controller each, and we went on this little journey. We had to rob a, a gas station. Yeah. We managed it in the end. We um, did it. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty cool. You decide what you do between characters at the start. You, the, fella, the fella offers you a gun, and you have to choose whether your character gets the gun or your companion characters get the gun. And that twists and turns as to how the story goes forward and how the game moves on. Yeah, and it it was cool because uh, it really encourages screen looking. Yeah. So this game is like you need to know what your other person is doing, but honestly, you you can play your own game while someone else is playing the actual like narrative of the story. You can go and explore around and uh, and find whatever you want. I like think, that's kind of cool. Right, and I think when we played around, I had the gun, so I decided to go stick them up. Yeah. I went to the uh, gas attendant, and I was like, "Give us your money." And then Jess was just wandering around, talking to people, watching for cops, and just kind of casing the joint. It's kind of it's a really enjoyable way to play yeah. a game. I had a beer in the convenience store yeah. while I was waiting while you were robbing it. It was yeah. great. Yeah, so that was really cool. Um, and and. Uh, oh. Yeah, Star Wars. I yeah. say Star Wars. So Battlefront 2, we finally got a look at the uh, story mode, which looks pretty incredible. The idea is, is that this game, kind of like Rogue One did with the movies, yep. it kind of straddles two trilogies. So it comes after Return of the Jedi, but before the other one. The other one. The other <laughs> Star Wars. <laughs> and uh, so you have uh, actors and actresses playing these Star Wars game titles. It's all about the Empire and it comes from their side, so it's like the Empire fighting against that pesky rebel alliance. Yeah. And that's the story. That, you know, you're not the good guy, really. You're part of the bad guys. And of course, nothing's ever that clear-cut these days. Well, it never is. Like, there's no one ever thinks, I'm going to be the bad guy. Everyone is actually out to save the world, believe it or not. Like, yeah. And that's kind of what this is getting at. You get to see the other side and see, see why maybe they want to destroy the, the alliance. I mean, yeah, yeah. exactly. And, and, I mean, and the, it wasn't like we had the, the campaign mode, which looks very tantalizing. We only got to play a little bit of that. But they also kind of rolled out all the things that are coming in multiplayer. And that means you can play as Chewie, we saw Han Solo, yep. Yoda, Darth Maul, Rey. Rey, yeah. Kylo Ren. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. It's going to be very So, very Battlefront cool. is pretty, and it looks it looks like it's going to be a pretty solid game, yeah. a good expansion you know, you know, on the yeah, series. You know, EA really wants it to succeed. They're yes. really like pushing it forward. They yeah. are. 
I mean, um, that bus the main thing for me. Yeah. Need for Speed. I didn't get to play. Did you get to drive it all? I didn't speed? get to. I didn't get to play it, but a few of our colleagues did. So yeah. I'm sure that'll be on Engadget. Yeah. And yeah, and I mean the Engadget team. We're kind of huge Burnout fans, and Need for Speed is a totally Burnout-ish game. Yeah. If you like Fast and the Furious and you like Burnout. <laughs> Yeah, you're probably gonna like Need for Speed. I think uh, in chat I called it car crash porn. Basically, <laughs> basically is what it felt like. Talking about, let's go from car crash porn to tech porn. Next up is Microsoft. Yes. Hardware. So Project Scorpio now has a really terrible name. <laughs> Xbox One, One X. X, not X. S. Xbox One X. <laughs> So you now have the Xbox One, you have the Xbox One S, and you now have the Xbox One X. And then you have the Xbox One X Enhanced Editions of games, which is just an even longer name. But what it's amazing that they've made it confusing, even though it's one game, like, you buy an Xbox One title, that will work on all those consoles. Yeah. How pretty it will look depends. Yeah. It'll depend on the game, it'll depend on the software, it'll depend on which console you bought. So for me it was a little bit confusing, but I'm not a huge Xbox man, so... It wasn't really pitched at me. Right, and I mean, so the Xbox One X follows Sony's PS4 Pro, which is a basically 4K console. Yeah. But they kind of upscale, they kind of cheat a little bit, uh, but it can do 4K. However, the Xbox One X is true 4K. That's, yeah. that's Microsoft's big pitch with this thing. And honestly, I saw it in action, and it looks really good. I mean, it was on a huge 4K TV, of course, and so it just looks good in general. Yeah. But like Minecraft, I saw the difference, like the updates they're doing to Minecraft in 4K, they're adding, I mean, just light on the edges of blocks and there are actual leaves in the trees that you can see from far away. The water has ripples and it's actually clear. It's a completely different game. And I mean, it makes sense because Microsoft now owns Minecraft. So of course they're of course. gonna, you Go know, big. massage its shoulders, put some makeup on it, you know, just really kind of... Those are pointy ready. shoulders, yeah. you gotta be careful. A 4K <laughs> massage on the shoulders, yeah. But yeah, it looks really incredible, really beautiful. And yeah. th it's funny because the other games, they already look really good. There's a new Forza game coming out and, you know, it's pretty, you know, it's cardboard. So we're yeah. using the word porn, I think, too much to <laughs> describe things. But it's a sexy E3, what can we say? Is, yeah, some of <laughs> beautiful cars that always look fantastic. Put that up to 4K, of course it's going to look better, but you don't get a kind of that goosebump, tingly feeling you right. might get when you see how much work they put into Minecraft. Right. So, I mean, the Xbox One X is basically a pretty powerful PC now, and or a, a kind of powerful PC. And you got that at the start. It's funny, when they kicked off the Xbox press event, they just kind of hit you with all the numbers. There was teraflops, teraflops. And RAM, and <laughs> glowing motherboards, and it was so PC-ish. You could it totally was. tell. It's those kind of hardcore games yeah. that really want all this power. Um, I mean, there's so much choice now if you're an Xbox One, a, you know, a possible, you know, expected buyer. It is, yeah. I'm not sure which one I'd go for. But. It's $500 for the All Xbox right. One X. So I think that's going to be a factor for a lot of people. I mean, that's like a launch console price for the new it generation. Is. That's how much I think the Xbox One and the, well, the PlayStation 4 was even less on the launch than that, wasn't the it? The PS4 was less, yeah, but the Xbox One launched at 500 so yeah. it mean, is, yeah. And then we moved on, so what do we have at Xbox? Oh, we had a new Assassin's Creed. We, okay, Assassin's Creed Origins, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Egypt. Egypt, and the setting was gorgeous. Yeah, it looked really beautiful. Yeah, um, I mean, I love ancient Egypt. That's just like right up my alley. I yeah. love that. So it was really cool to see a desert landscape done with color. They had sunsets. They had yeah. green, green kind of grass. Yeah, and you'd imagine like Egypt is just going to be all sand, all yellow all the time. It could be really boring. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they, of course, it's, it's gone back in time. So this is all about, the story is apparently about the origins of the Brotherhood, of the Assassins. And other cool things we saw, you get to control an eagle, you get to fly over everything. Yeah. I'm all about superpowers. So that's kind of like a superpower to me. It is. And there's, a, there's actually a some weird gamut of animals they've got in this thing. There's hippos, elephants, crocs. Like a leopard or something. I yeah. saw some kind of cat. Hyena at one point. No, that maybe that was it. I'm hoping you can just like make a gang of animals to do your bidding. Uh, yeah. Maybe it's actually the Lion King, the game. No, Assassin's it's in Egypt. That doesn't make any sense. Assassin's Creed Lion. Okay. What else do we have? Oh, um, the next one for me was Anthem. Yeah. So, so Bioware. <laughs> so. So. Bioware made yeah. a Mass Effect game. It wasn't so good. The, the most recent Mass Effect game. They've made plenty of Mass Effect games that were really good. Yes. yes. And this most recent one was not. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they're going they're going on for a new open world that how did I put it when we were talking before? Destiny meets Iron Man meets Monster Hunter. 
Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. You fly around in robots, you attack monsters. It's a cooperative game, so there's different kind of uh, styles of play. There's kind of giant hulking juggernauts. There's more live mm -hmm. ranger robot suits you can get into. And it looks really pretty. I mean, I love the idea of a huge open world you can come fly around with in your own like Iron Man suit. Yeah. We didn't get to see that much of it, though. This is a very much a, a tantalizing glimpse at this new game. That was the thing with me. It it looked gorgeous, though. Like that was the the real driving home factor. Was like it was a gorgeous demo, and it showed up like anything Destiny could could show off right now. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So like, and that's kind of the the market it feels like it's going for that yeah, Destiny right. vibe. Um, so yeah, it it was pretty, and it looked like Iron Man, and it. Yeah. I'm intrigued. The, the crowd also went wild for it. I think as yes. soon as they knew Bioware was making something for Xbox, they yeah. were getting really hyped. Yeah. Other than that, wow, like we've already talked about Forza. Crackdown the Porsche 3. Stage, as you would. Oh, yeah, Sorry, I, I don't care about the Porsche. <laughs> Crackdown 3, yes. Um, we, were, we, were, we were there doing a live vlog at the show, so I'm sat, I'm sat next to Jess, and on the other side of Jess we have our other associate editor, Tim Seppala, and he went crazy for Crackdown and freaked us all out because we're all beavering away at our laptops and Tim goes crazy. <laughs> he just goes, wow, threw a few F-bombs down and then carried on back to work. So It was fun. adorable. Yeah. But, uh, he was that, very excited. That, was, that got me more excited for the game, I think, than the trailer <laughs> yeah, itself right. did. So that's fine. Because the trailer, honestly, was, uh, it was Terry Crews, which yeah. was cool. Like, he was funny. Uh, but then the actual gameplay that they showed off was a little janky to me. Yeah, it looked, it looked a little like stuttery. a typical Xbox One game, yeah. if that. Yeah. Um, and, and after, this has after been we coming. were talking about all these sumptuous games, mm -hmm. it's kind of a bit, it's a bit dry. It is, yeah. Um, so then Xbox wrapped up. We had all these games, all these ideas coming in our mind about Xbox One X. And then we went to Ubisoft. I went to Ubisoft, actually. I did it myself. Yes. So good I went myself. Uh, and the first game to up, like the first notable game that came up was uh, Mario and Rabbits. Mushroom Kingdom, Kingdom Battle, Battle Mushroom Kingdom. Mushroom Kingdom, uh, yeah, sure, called? something. Kingdom mushroom battle. Kingdom Battle. So the pitch here is you have the Mario characters, Super Mario, Toad, Princess Peach, Luigi, Yoshi at one point. And then you have the rabbits version of them that are just kind of really horrible versions of them. <laughs> Princess Peach looks like an utter B word. Oh no. Yeah, she's always taking selfies. She looks oh, no. really horrible. Okay. Um, and it's a. Uh, it's like an adorable XCOM, it's like a strategy game. So you wander around stages battling other rabbits that have gone evil because of course they did, around the Mushroom Kingdom. So you have those familiar parts of Mushroom Kingdom life, you have the piranha plants, you know, Yoshi's wandering around, you have shells and tunnels and building blocks. And it's very intriguing, it looks super polished. It's kind of funny to see Ubisoft putting their hand to a Nintendo franchise like this. It's so weird. Like. The combination of Mario and Rabbids is just, I mean, who came up with that? I mean, we thought it was a joke. It kind of leaked exactly. very early on. I thought, who thought this was a good idea? Like, why? Yeah, There's it. there it is. One. I got one of these uh, little characters at the Ubisoft thing, so you're going to see him here. He's got Mario's hat and the stash, and this is the gun, so yeah. Each of the characters now will have a little gun attached to their arm, and that's how they battle on this kind of weird, cutesy XCOM Mario. Thing, it's kind of cute, like, kind of. It's kind of, I, yeah. I'm not sure how I feel about it's, rabbits yet. I, yeah, the word I'd use is unsettling. I'm not unsettling. Quite sure, <laughs> on it. yeah. And so it's Ubisoft, so we got even more about Assassin's Creed. Yes. At that point, one of our editors had already started playing it, so we were already kind of getting ripped through it all. They had like a 30 second gameplay demo. If you were interested that much in Assassin's Creed, you can watch 30 minutes of someone else playing it. I'm not sure if I'm that enthused. That's fine. That's an option. Hey, Twitch exists for a reason, man. People like that. And then, my favorite show announcement so far, Beyond Good and Evil 2. Out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. And I think, actually, if you read back on our Engadget's like, teaser about what to expect from E3, yeah. the guy who wrote it, Nick Summers, he literally put a sassy little comment saying, sure, I'm, you know, I'm sure Beyond Good and Evil 2 will make a showing, and it did. Oh, maybe that's why they did it. And it was weird, it was right? Because we're watching this presentation on stage, and we see the pig, and I'm like, guys, like I'm tapping away to the team, guys. It looks it's like happening. it's uh, Beyond Good and Evil too, and like we're like, but this there's a monkey character, and he's stealing from the pig guy, and then they're dropping f bombs left, right, and yeah. center. And Beyond Good and Evil, if you played it, it's pretty mild. Yeah. It's like a, it's a very elegant game. It's very um, low profile, very chill. Yeah. And then there's f bombs left, right, and center, missiles getting launched. 
a guy strange. with a, a monkey character with like this uh, grapple hook hand. And yeah, it was Beyond Good and Evil too. So it's like, I have so many questions. I oh just yeah. Don't know where they're going with it, but I'm super hyped about it. Did we get any uh, like release window or anything for that? It's just that it's coming. It exists. Wow. Oh, that's enough. Of, that's enough, enough news, enough. honestly, for it's that game. Enough, yeah, really. absolutely. Especially like game titles. Generally, like Xbox didn't have that many major right. things to announce. Nothing that kind of right. really set the crown on fire. There was no like Halo thing or Gears of War. Right. I don't even know what Gears of War we're on now. It would be Gears of War 5, if not five. a prequel or some, yeah. you know, whatever silly thing they'd come up yeah. with next. And then what else? Oh, and then they wrapped it all up with Far Cry 5, so we finally got to see it in action. Oh, good. That looks fun. Yeah. So well, the, 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 t the gameplay tra trailer we saw introduced your kind of crew of guns for hire. So you have a sniper, you have air support, a little guy that's riding around in like a, a croc plane, mm -hmm. tiny little plane, and then you have a dog. I saw the dog. Okay, yeah. so what is this dog's deal? Because it's kind of the most exciting part of the game yeah, for me. So the dog yeah. attacks cultists, it'll pick up new guns for you. It's just there to help you out, man. Like, I'm wondering how they'll deal with it. Remember dog meat in Fallout 4? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. So I'm like, how hurt can it get? Will right. the dog ever die? Because I don't like it when dogs die oh. in games. I can't deal with that stuff. But as a writer, like, how do you how do you not do that wonderful emotional story arc of heartbreak when your dog yeah, dies? I'm just saying, yeah. it's really tempting. I mean, it's there. So. It's right on the table. Yeah, it really and is. It, it was, I was surprised how kind of sumptuous and bright and colorful this Far Cry right. 4 is. You know, it's based in the U.S., yes. which is colorful in places, sure. But this is in the middle of Montana in a mountain. But it. There's colors everywhere. It looks really pretty, really gorgeous. And another yeah. game, I, I guess, that would make the most of this Xbox One X. Right. Well, I mean, and maybe that's, maybe that's just a bigger trend, too, in the industry. We're moving away from these browns and gray shooters. Misery. And, yeah, and really using our, our color palette. So that, that's great. really cool. You have, of course, you have these consoles now that can deal with HDR, so you have that yeah. full gamut of color even more so. Yeah, absolutely. Next up, what do we have next up? That was Ubisoft oh, now. Next. Bethesda. Bethesda. So I covered Bethesda with Tim, Timothy Seppala, our colleague, and it was interesting. It was mayhem, wasn't it? It was mayhem. So the show itself was really cool, actually, because they had a carnival. It was this like creepy, broken down carnival set up in the middle of LA. And uh, it had, Which you know, is really what you want when you're ha ha hauling around a laptop at the end of the day of the first busy day of E3. Yeah, at like 9 p.m. Really, really where I wanted to be. You know, honestly though, Creepy Carnival, that's like, that is my style. I get right. that, like that's where I want to be. Uh, but it was, it was a little mad, it was a little crazy. Um, they had Fallout imagery and Doom, they had like Doom monsters everywhere and this little tunnel you could go through, there was a prey section. Uh, Probably they had, Skyrim, because it's been Skyrim everywhere this week. There was Skyrim, there was Quake, there was, it was, yeah, they, they really did it up. And there was a Ferris wheel, which is cool. Yeah. Um, but they had chicken legs and, and a bar, too. It's very notable. Because the crowd was excited when the show started. And this is more of a for fans show. Like, yes. the media is there, but it's very much more for the gamers, for you guys. To right. Kind of, scream at the game you love and there's lots of like fan service and it's all about you guys um, but there is lots of news as well but they just kind of punched through it all didn't they well they didn't even do it on stage is the thing right? like they had a stage but they didn't use it they just really showed a, a video of all their stuff which is fine um, I mean, so they showed off a, a few VR games yeah, they had, VR games. we had ESO I believe yeah and uh, the, but the one game that really stood out to me at uh, Bethesda was The Evil Within 2. Ah, yes. So this More is... More horror. Yes, a horror game. But hopefully it's better than the first. Because The Evil Within was supposed to be a horror game. It looked like a horror game. But it, when it played out, it actually really wasn't much of a horror game. Um, so we're, we're, we're going to see. And this, it is comes from the, from, this is from the guy that gave us Resident Evil, right? Resident Evil and Resident Evil 4. He's the director. So, yeah, the high which is, watermarks, yeah. Yeah, the best Resident Evil, one of the best games ever, really. So yeah, it's it's going to be an interesting an interesting horror game. A lot of missing daughter, burning fire, it's limbs and things, limbs and demons, and yeah. So it's pretty dark, pretty gritty, but looks looks good. I think the things that like stick in my mind from the show was a new Dishonored um, that too. segment. Now yeah. this is going to be a standalone adventure. I can't remember whether it's DLC or something. I'll, I'll assume it was DLC because it looks like the Sonic 2 engine. Right. Anyway, it's about killing the the name of the most, you know, the sinister god creature. I want to say the Beyonder, but that's Marvel. I can't. Anyway, Sorry. sinister god creature that gave everyone their powers. He gave Corvo yeah. his powers. 
So yeah, you're gonna go assassinate him apparently. I'm not sure how you assassinate a god, but that sounds like a pretty good pitch. Very carefully. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't let him know that you're coming <laughs> to kill him. Well, yeah. Top three. That was the first Yeah. That was it, like a lot of VR bits and pieces, Doom VFR. That doesn't seem to be a more like a standard VR thing. It looks like you'll teleport across places, yeah. shoot things, teleport again. Right. Which makes it more likely to be a more precise shooter, but Maybe. I mean, I love Doom. Like, the new Doom is incredible, so playing yeah. it in VR is actually really exciting. I want to see those monsters, you know, right up in my face. So that's one that really, yeah, yeah. caught my eye. Like, first, FPS shooters also, FPS even, yeah. work really well in VR. You know, you're already in that first-person oh, yeah. perspective, so... It's good. It, it's it's going to be hard to kind of screw that up, I think. It's yeah. going gonna to be really good. Well, and then Fallout VR. There's a, float, there was a floating pit boy Did you see that? It didn't look too elegant. I'm, I'm curious about that one, so yeah, we'll see. Yeah, yeah. We'll see how that works yeah. in real life, yeah. And so that was Bethesda, and that was day minus two, minus one. Negative one, Negative I think, one. maybe. So that was, then we all went home, cried a little, slept, and then it was back into day two. What started day two? Day one. Day PC one, gaming zero. show. Ah, yes. So that was the Intel thing. Um, yeah. And VR, high-powered VR. PCs. VR. We've already discussed on Engadget, you know, Intel's new chipsets, very powerful. You have NVIDIA doing crazy stuff with very thin, actually stylish looking gaming laptops. Mm -hmm. Lots of good stuff going on there. Yeah. A few VR teasers. Intel's going to be setting up like a VR gaming league. Yeah. And other yeah. bits and pieces. Little esports. But in lots, VR. Of the, lots of little tiny bits of news that we right. need to kind of flesh out and hear more about. So we'll probably be talking about that a lot more later this week. Yeah. After the PC gaming show, what was next? Sony. Gosh, Sony. Never heard of them. Yeah, who? Sorry. <laughs> Sony, yes. So my favorite, Sony yes. PlayStation, um, which had really bad Wi-Fi. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, we were live blogging Sony and the Wi-Fi was not so great. But so uh, it worked out. Minimal social media things from social influence and, and you know media like us, just because the yeah, connectivity was just kind of a nightmare. But yeah. it didn't stop us reporting on it. So we had a few guys on the floor, including Jess, dealing with all the reportage from the floor, and then we had our whole team backing them up at hotel rooms and places with good Wi-Fi. And Sony has had so many good E3 presentations up until this year. Yes. I was kind of surprised how just okay it was. Sony is like, they show up at E3, that's what they do, they drop the mic, they show up Microsoft, they rub it in their face, like, yeah. that's what Sony does. They just do a better E3 than Microsoft every time. That's usually, yeah, that's what the goal feels like. Right. And this year, I really think they missed the mark. I mean, it was fine. It was fine. We saw Uncharted again, which we already know is coming out, we know when it's coming out, we saw a add-on for Horizon. Right, which was cool. Yeah. That was unexpected. I did like that. Yeah. Yeah, no one knew that was coming, but it's still a game that already exists. Exactly. Then we have a remake of Shadow and the Colossus, a game cool. that's already been remade once. Yeah. So they're re-remaking -re it. Yeah. And now we'll be coming to PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 4 Pro. Mm -hmm. What else? Oh, and Spider-Man, which we saw announced last year. We got to see it in action now, so we saw some gameplay. That was the things that we've already kind of seen before. Yeah. Notable new stuff all came in with PlayStation VR, it seemed. Yeah. So we had Moss, which was a game that put you in the role of a tiny, adorable mouse with a red neckerchief and a sword. Was it actually a sword or was it a leaf or something? I think it was a real sword and then he had a leaf on his hand or his arm. It was He was adorable. It was like Redwall the video game. I yeah, wanted to yeah, play it. Very, yeah, very, very cute looking. Yeah. And again, it's kind of a nice little kind of palette cleanser to the typical VR. Yes. What was yeah. it? Uh, was it Beta Squad or something? What's that? Uh, there was team. Star Child, and then there's the yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. guns shooting all the yeah. time. Oh my gosh, that just was shooting, 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 yeah, shooting, it was shooting. Insane. And then after that came this adorable mouse creature. So it's kind of a nice little it was good. imbalance. We also saw Skyrim VR. Yes. Now I'm not sure how that's going to work. I'm not sure if that's going to be like a little, tiny mini game. But it seemed like you were actually in Skyrim, casting spells, yeah. hitting things with stuff. Fighting stuff. Skyrim, yeah, Skyrim yeah. things. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah, pretty exciting. Remember, Skyrim is also going to be coming to Switch soon as well. So it's kind of Skyrim here, there, and everywhere. But again, that game is how many years old? Right. <laughs> I mean, People love it, though. They oh, love yeah, it. they totally do. Like, it, it's a great experience. I understand why it's coming to these new consoles. Yeah. But for Sony, for the show, they. I honestly don't think they showed off anything coming out in 2017, for sure, except for Destiny. Right. They really banked on Destiny too, and, and this, um, this content. Yeah, or, and you yeah. can tell they just they have like the power over Xbox because they're getting the exclusives. They're getting exclusive maps, weapons, right. equipment, 
Like, it's just kind of PlayStation being its chest, knowing it's winning at the moment. It feels a little cocky. Yeah, I and know. And it's we'll funny see. because I would have argued PlayStation was also dominating last year, and then they still brought the fight, and they had an incredible year right. last year. No. And they had things like we had no The Last of Us 2 this year, no The Last of Us 2, no more update on the remake of Final Fantasy 7. Right. Uh, like Kingdom Dreams. Hearts. Dreams. Where like is that Hearts, Media what, Molecule? Square Enixes, they just kind of shoehorned a trailer in, in the middle of the night. Right. Which is probably morning Japan time, sure, but. I woke up to news of this new Kingdom Hearts trailer, and normally I'm on top of that stuff. I'm like, where did this come from? I know, right? Where did this happen? Yeah. And who, like, it probably means they're not going to have anything new Kingdom Hearts-wise to show to us. I mean, I might be wrong. I'll have to go peep at the Square Enix stand later, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, it was... Yeah, it was just a little underwhelming as far as Sony's shows go, usually. But again, they had a wonderful stage, you know? Like, they do know how to put on a good, solid performance. They had these, like, 3D or LED curtains that that really just kind of brought the screen to life. Like right. you saw you saw things coming, like lights going everywhere when guns were shooting, and there was actual fire on stage, and they had set dressings of, of caves and, it, and forests. And like compared to Xbox, where it just looks like a giant games console uh, glowing up. I mean, it's right. still pretty fantastic. Mm -hmm. But didn't they launch fireworks at the Sony one at one point? Oh yeah, they had they had sparklers, they had fire, they had smoke, all all the bells and whistles. That's how you demonstrate confidence, though, right? You know, you're winning the console war. If you're launching yeah. fireworks during your event. Well, you're good then. Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah. But our, our colleague Billy almost lost his eyebrows when the flames <laughs> But uh, he got some good photos. I mean, so that's Billy okay. has a shaved head to begin with. There's not much, you know, hair left on that head so to kind fine. of get rid of. He's fine. He's fine. He's fine. He's in the hospital now. He's fine. He's fine. And that was it. That was the end of day zero. Now we start today. Nintendo wrapped up early in the morning, but we're going to talk about that tomorrow. Yeah, I think so. And we have yeah. now, like, I wish we could show you, like, we have media now just swarming across the show I floor. know. There's we a bunch a, of have, people here. Yeah, we have an engadget editor here and there just tackling things. Yeah. But yeah, the show has finally started. We get to here play stuff. Mm -hmm. What are you looking forward to playing? Oh, man. I don't even know. You know, I really want to try out Shadow of War. Ooh. Because I'm just intrigued by how they're going to handle this. Is that an Xbox exclusive or Um, No, no, that's going to be cross-platform as far as I know. Um, but that one looks cool. Honestly, if they're going to show off Beyond Good and Evil 2, love to play it. I don't think yeah, they are. Yeah, I don't think there's going to be anything yeah. to play there. Yeah. So I that. mean, I'm looking forward to get my hands on Nino Kuni 2. That's probably what I'm going to do after this, actually. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm a huge fan of that, and we'll have Nino Kuni stuff on stage uh, yeah. later this week, which is exciting. Um, but yeah, apart from that, that's us wrapped up for today. Yeah. Come back oh. with us tomorrow. We'll be mm -hmm. here at the same time talking, hopefully, about stuff we played. We have a whole day to play stuff. We also have a whole stage show, though. so I, I did want to say actually, Engadget stage is new at E3, so this is our first time. It's awesome. Look at all these beautiful consoles we've got. We're going to play games. we got Switch, Ooh. we have like a bajillion controllers. We're very excited. So we're playing some stuff on stage, we'll be showcasing some of the new games, and we have guests, we have people to talk to, we'll be talking about VR, talking about you know the effect the game is having on our society. We're going to have an Xbox One X on stage, a mock-up design. When is that? Uh, I believe it's tomorrow. Tomorrow. But so check the schedule on Engadget.com yeah, for, so really for that. Yeah, so if you really want to have a proper up-close look at the Xbox One X, tomorrow is the time to do it. I'll be here on stage live at E3. Thank you very much for watching. We will be back tomorrow. Uh, I'm Matt Smith, UK Bureau Chief at Engadget. I'm Jessica Condit, Senior Reporter at Engadget. Have a great E3, guys.